Hi, everybody. Welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa Verbling, yay! And I'm one of the teachers here at Verbling. And in this hour, we're going to be doing um, some reading and some discussing. So we're going to be speaking about the article that we read. The article is not very long, so it won't take very long to read it. But it does uh, bring up some interesting topics that are very timely in our modern day world, basically related to the internet and whether or not um, our governments should be censoring certain websites, certain information, and how uh, people can use the internet responsibly. So those are kind of the topics for this hour. So if you have a reservation, please go ahead and use the reservation now. If you don't, just wait a minute and then you will see the join class button and then you'll be able to join. So welcome Abimelech. How do you say yes. your name? <laughs> Abimelech. Abimelech? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Abimelech. Uh, where are you from, Abimelech? Uh, I'm from India. Oh, wow, cool. Uh, what part of India? Uh, it's uh, properly uh, northeast side. Okay, the northeast side. Okay, wonderful. And is that where you are right now? Uh, yes. Okay, nice. And that is that a picture of you in India? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, Darjeeling. Oh, Darjeeling. Okay, nice. It looks like uh, some farmland or something. Yeah? Mm, countryside? Uh, uh, yes, it's a uh, countryside, yes. Tea garden. Tea garden. Oh, nice. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Abimelech, are you new to Verbling? Or are you yes. just new to my class? Okay, great. How did you learn about Verbling? Uh, actually, uh, uh, I want to learn English. That's why I, I was searching. Uh, in internet any sites uh-huh sure uh, cool I got it. are you doing the free trial version or did you join uh, I joined oh great wonderful have you been taking some classes already yes uh-huh yeah. okay it's been, uh, eight days oh awesome okay what time is it right now where you are um, at 10 30 oh okay 10.30 at yeah. night. Night, yes. right, okay. <laughs> I'm in, um, I live in the state of Washington in the United States, so for me it's just after 10 o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah, great. So um, let's just talk a little bit before we get started. Sometimes it takes a little while for people to join the class. I, I do have an article that we can read and we can talk about uh, the internet and stuff. But the thing with Verbling, if you may have noticed, is we actually never know how many students are going to join the class because students can uh, make a reservation, but sometimes they use it and sometimes they don't. And sometimes students uh, show up at the very beginning, sometimes they show up a little bit later. It really depends. It's very flexible from the student point of view and from the teacher point of view we just make our schedule and we put up classes and each hour there might be one or two or even three English classes happening at the same time so the students have choices maybe they want to uh, you know do this instead of that that kind of thing so you never know how many students are going to uh, show up for the class um, of course, that could be a good thing. It might just be me and you. Then we have a private class, <laughs> which will give you a lot of opportunities to uh, speak and ask questions and things. Um, and otherwise, sometimes other people end up showing up. If we keep talking a little bit here, they start to join. So mm -hmm. Greg is joining us. Hi, Greg. Welcome. Hi. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Did you have a nice day? Typical day. I have some at the at the morning. I have some couple of problems with in the banks. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing very special happened. Yeah. But, that that's interesting that you say you had a problem with the bank because I was talking to Hamid in another class earlier this week and he said he had a problem at the bank. <laughs> that's <laughs> <what>. <laughs> earlier in the day he he had a problem. Yeah. The There's some kind of rule that some. Couple of people in a day, or many people in a day, mm -hmm. has the same. Simo has the problems in the banks. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've never uh, been to a bank. I have been to England, but I never had to go to a bank, so I don't know exactly how it works there. But um, when you go to the bank in England, is um, is it busy? Are lots of people lined up, or is it pretty uh, uh, not crowded? Uh, that depends from the branch. Uh, you know, uh-huh. I'm in the right. headquarters of my bank, I didn't see too many people. Mm. Uh, but in the local branch, close to my house, I see uh, I saw a lot of people, and because people try to make the deposits, so mm-hmm. there's uh, long lines to the uh, cashier, and like they get the idea to just put special machine inside, and will people just will be adding money to their account if they want to. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, is it? Do you know? Is it common in England to do uh, direct deposits? Like if you uh, have a job that's a regular salary, for example, here in the United States, a lot of people just have a direct deposit, so you don't ever get a paycheck. It just gets deposited automatically into your account. So, so it's just like you giving the, the money to the hand of the employee. You yeah, the, the, your company. It depends on what kind of job you have. If you have a job that's just like at a restaurant or something, it doesn't usually work that way. But if you're like a teacher or a fireman or you work for the government or a big corporation, a lot of times they just have uh, what we call direct deposit. So the company, through their uh, HR department or something, human resources, they just de- directly deposit the money into your account like on a specific day every month, you know, if you get paid twice a month or once a month, something like that. I'm not sure. I never really see this kind of thing. It is okay. more like um, I was working for the, mostly for the agencies. So. Mm. so you get a check. Not really the check. Actually, maybe this is what you're talking about. They just, I see the money uh-huh. on my account and they just, Call it, send me something like you call it pay. Uh, here you, you, you they call it pay slip. I think. Pay stop, in the, yeah, pay stop. Pay stop, yeah, pay yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I'm talking and, about. And on the firm, I think that between uh, that is the night from Thursday um, to Friday, where actually you can see the money after right. twelve o'clock. I'm I never really see any other options. Yeah, I that's use, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I was a deposit because I collect just money on the bills. So oh, okay. Collecting money, and I just I don't want to have to worry that everything what is my debit card just disappear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's probably the same here. Hi, Anatoly. How are you? Welcome. Hello. Uh, fine. Thank you. All right. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. And Olga. Hi, Olga. How are you? Olga, are you there? Your uh, microphone is muted. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, I do. I hear you. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Okay, guys, so uh, we can get started now. I was just uh, telling uh, Bimelech here that sometimes we just talk a little bit at the beginning of the class to, to wait to see if people join just so that we can all start together. Of course, um, here on Verbling, you can join a class at any time. You don't have to be shy about doing that. It's it's usually just fine to join a class, and if you have to leave early, um, you know, it's nice if you say goodbye, but if you don't, you can just drop out. It's very flexible here. The teachers are just going to keep teaching, and students can keep uh, participating. So what I have for this hour is I found this article here on uh, this website which is a, a British website. It's the from the UK, and it's in the new the world news part of this uh, the Independent here. And the title is Turkish President Erdogan uh, Erdogan <laughs> tells conference I am increasingly against the internet every day. So I thought that was an interesting thing, considering uh, we know that in Turkey earlier. I don't know if it's earlier this year or last year, they were blocking YouTube and Twitter. And so I know some other governments around the world do block different sites or different uh, things on the internet. And so it's an interesting thing this idea of uh, should governments be 
blocking websites or should the people be uh, able to access all websites? So I thought we could read the article quickly together and then we could discuss that. What are your opinions? What's happening in your own country? What do you think should be happening? That type of thing. So I put the article here in this uh, Google Doc so we can all see it a little better and we don't have to look at all the ads and everything. The link to the actual article is always at the bottom here and you can get to it if you want uh, later by that. And we're going to read together. So what I do for the reading class, and like I said, it's a pretty short article, so I think we'll be able to go through it quickly. Um, I read out loud first because I want you to listen to hear how I'm pronouncing the words and my intonation. Um, unfortunately, I might pronounce, mispronounce some of these words. We don't have any Turkish students with us. Sometimes we have Hamid or Nihan or other Turkish students. They could help us <laughs> with this pronunciation. But anyways... Uh, I read a little bit at a time, something like a paragraph or two, short paragraphs at a time. And then you have a turn for you to read out loud. Then I will pick a few words that uh, may be unfamiliar to you, and I will explain them. And then we'll just go on that way. And then when we're done, we'll have our conversation. And at any time, you can ask questions. If you're not sure what something means, you don't understand it, you can ask me to explain it. And also, if you're wondering, you know, if you have a question like, could I use it in this example, or could I use it this way, or in this context, you can also ask me uh, questions like that. Sometimes I also point out grammatical structures. Uh, instead of, you know, studying grammar books, when you get to an intermediate level or beyond, uh, I just like to read English and use English and then look at the grammar as it's being used in the context of a story or an article or something like that. Okay, so we can get started. Turkish President Erdogan uh, tells conference, I am increasingly against the Internet every day. The Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has defended his government's efforts to control online speech, telling a press Freedom Conference, I am increasingly against the Internet every day. Mr. Erdogan's comments came during an unprecedented meeting with the Committee to Protect Journalists and the International Press Institute. Okay. Why don't we start with uh, Abimelech? Abimelech, why don't, you can read all of that that I just read. You can read okay. uh, Turkish President Erdogan tells con conference... I'm increasingly against the internet every day. The Turkish president Recep uh, Tayyip Erdogan has defended his government's, go government's efforts to control online speech, telling a press freedom conference. I'm increasingly against the internet every day. Mr. Erdogan comments, Erdogan's comments came during an unprecedented meeting with the committee to protest journalists and the International Press Institute. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see. He has defended. So when you defend something, it's like you're saying, hey, it's okay that we did this. So he's defending something, and what it is is his government's efforts, you know, what they are doing to control online speech. So I think you guys all understand to control. They're trying to make sure only certain things can be uh, said or basically seen actually by the the people of Turkey. So he's telling this to a group of people at a press freedom conference. So a conference is like a bunch of people in a certain industry getting together to discuss the issues related to that particular sector of the economy or business or industry, something like that. So this is a press freedom. So, of course, that just means, you know, the press, the media, newspapers, websites, radio, they like to have freedom to discuss the issues that are happening around the world. So this is where this was happening. Uh, his comments, you know, what he was saying, his words, um, came during... So um, they were said, he said them during an unprecedented meeting. Unprecedented means it's never happened before. So it's like setting a new precedent or something that's happening maybe for the first time, something that's very unusual. So it was a, it was a meeting 
we had these two different groups uh, related to the press. So the journalists, the committee to protect journalists. So you think of uh, protecting the journalists who go into especially maybe war-torn areas and they're trying to get this, the information and sometimes they get injured or shot. So I imagine it's something like that. You know, that's what their job is. They want to protect people, uh, journalists. And then the International Press Institute. So we don't really know too much about these. They're just telling us these two groups. Okay, the meeting, which also included Prime Minister Ahmed uh, Davutoglu and Minister of Justice Bakir Bozdag, took place as the Turkish parliament voted on military action in Syria. Turkey's leaders aggressively defended its record on press freedom during the 90-minute conference and criticized various media outlets for polarizing and distorting coverage of recent events, such as the Gezi Park anti-government rallies. Okay. Um, Anatoly, read that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The meeting, which also included Prime Minister Ahmed Davuto Glu and Minister of Justice uh, Baker Bozdak, uh, took place as uh, the Turkish parliament voted on military action in Syria. Turkey's leader uh, aggressively defended its record on press freedom uh, during uh, the 19-minute uh, conference and criticized various media outlets for polarizing and distor uh, distorting uh, coverage of recent events such as Gezi Park and uh, anti-government rallies. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, great, thanks. Okay, so the meeting also included, so that just means there were these other people also that were part of the, um, the discussion or part of the meeting, which are top leaders, we would say, in Turkey. So the Prime Minister and the Minister of Justice, so justice having to do with the law of the country, um, and they were taking place. So this took place, this meeting took place or happened, or this is what, you know, it was going on while the Turkish parliament uh, voted on military action in Syria. So this is, you know, very uh, happening right now. It's very timely, we can say. It's going on right now. Uh, you might, you know, you might be reading about it in the news if you follow the news. Okay, the Turkish leaders, they aggressively defended. So, uh, you know, you, they could have just said defended, but when they use the, the uh, adverb here, aggressively, it means, you know, they're, they're not just very calm. They're saying, like, you know, yes, we're doing okay. It's, you know, this is the way we're doing it, and it's right. And so they're very confident, and uh, that's why they're using the word aggressively there. So, um you know, they're not stepping down. They're not saying they did anything wrong is what that really means right there. Um, their record. The record that you have of doing something is is what you've done. So your, you know, Turkey's record on press freedom relates to what has Turkey, you know, in terms of the government, the Turkish government, what have they been doing related to the press? So, you're, you know, maybe they, like I said, they had blocked Twitter and YouTube in the past. So that's part of their record, part of what they have done. Um, we also use the record like related to sports, for example. Uh, you, if your soccer team has a really good record, it means they've won a lot of games. If they have a bad record, then they've been losing a lot of games. So it's kind of like a score of what's been happening before now, so in the past. All right, so this uh, conference, they were criticizing. So this is, again, the British spelling with S is... In the United States, we use a Z, but either way is fine. So they were criticizing various media outlets, so newspapers, radios, perhaps TV shows, something like that. And what they're accusing them of is polarizing and distorting. So to polarize something means to make two different poles. So we have the North Pole and the South Pole, for example. But in this case, you have two sides of something. And when you polarize them, you instead of bringing them together around like a common understanding, you make them very different. So you like, you know, the good guys and the bad guys kind of thing. So, and then the distortion, or to distort is the verb, uh, they're distorting the coverage of recent events. So when the media distorts something, they're accused of distorting something, 
it's like make saying the telling the story in a certain way that makes people think something happened when it really had happened this other way. So that's what the government is saying that the media distorts the the events, their coverage. So when they cover a story, when they report on a, something that's happening, like a gov anti-government rally, they're changing the facts. Is kind of what they're saying and giving people the wrong idea. Um, a rally is like a protest or a demonstration. Okay, so local newspapers and major publications such as the New York Times and CNN International were among those slammed by officials according to the CPJ. Media should never have been given the liberty to insult, Mr. Erdogan was quoted as saying during the 90-minute meeting. He also expressed concern that criminal and terrorist organizations such as the Islamic State go online to recruit followers, saying he is increasingly against the Internet. His remarks come after he approved a law tightening control of the Internet and increasing the powers held by telecoms authorities earlier in September. Okay, Greg. All that. Okay. Local, newspapers, local newspapers and major publications such as the New York Times and CNN International were among those slammed by officials according to CPJ. Media should never have been given the, the liberty to insult, Mr. Erdogan was quoted as saying during the 90-minute meeting. He also expressed concern that criminal and terrorist organizations such as the Islamic State go online to recruit followers, saying he is increasingly against the Internet. His remarks come after he approved a law tightening control of the Internet and increasing the powers held by telecoms authorities earlier in September. Mm -hmm. So, local newspapers, so uh, local related to wherever this conference took place, <laughs> and major publications. So a major publication is like a really important or very large uh, uh, business that produces publications like the New York Times. So the New York Times is a major publication because it has a lot of readers. CNN International has a lot of viewers. So a major just means important or significant or large in this case. Um, so they were among those. So they were um, included in the, the people who were slammed by officials. So slammed here means they were criticized. So slammed usually is like you could actually push somebody up against the wall. You could slam them up against the wall or you can slam your car door shut when you close it and you close it really hard you slam it but in this case it's they were criticized by the officials they were getting slammed so when somebody's yelling at you or criticizing you or telling you you're doing something wrong we use the word you know you're getting slammed or you got slammed so they were slammed okay so there's lots of different ways to use that word it's pretty pretty common actually um, but it's kind of a slangy word actually <laughs> so they got slammed by which really means they got they were really you know told off kind of really criticized um, he's saying that they should never be given the liberty or the freedom to insult to insult probably the leaders and the choices that they're making that's what I imagine he's talking about uh, we can talk about that in a minute when we're done um, he was quoted as saying so when when somebody is quoted that's you know they put that in quotes when they do the report or when they make uh, write the article and it's like a direct quote so it's, ex it's supposed to be exactly what the person said not you know an interpretation or you're changing the words so it's quoted as saying so uh, supposedly that's what he said that's what the idea is there alright so he also expressed concern so he has problems with the this idea that maybe criminal and terrorist organizations and he gives the example of the Islamic State. He thinks they, you know, it's not a good idea for them to be able to go online to recruit followers. So to recruit people is to try to get people to join you. 
So you can recruit members into a group. Uh, the army can recruit people to join the army, for example. And in this case, a terrorist organization can recruit people or get try to get people to join their cause and do things with them. So he, again, we, he's increasingly against. So increasingly more and more. So more and more as he sees how the internet is working, he is against it, the internet. He doesn't like it. Um, his remarks, this is just another word for his comments or his words, um, they're coming after he approved. So after, when you approve something, you say it's okay. So you approve, the government approves a law, now it is a law. All right, so the tightening of control. So tightening control just means it makes it harder and harder for uh, certain internet sites to operate, for example, they're shutting them down. The, you think of governments tightening their control over something or somebody. All right, so do, 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 do. All right, increasing the powers held by. Held by just means what they have, you know, so certain telecommunications authority. So telecoms, that's short for telecommunications. So internet, radio, TV, phones, you know, all those kinds of different telecommunications devices. Okay, earlier in the year, the president came under a storm of criticism for attempting to block access to Twitter and YouTube after users spread allegations of corruption ahead of elections. However, the CPJ says the Turkish government did commit to taking steps to address concerns raised by the delegation while the Ministry of Justice agreed to continue reform of anti-press laws. Okay, Olga. Okay, earlier in the year, the president came under a storm of criticism of attempting to block access to Twitter and YouTube after users spread allegations of corruption ahead of uh, elections. However, the CPJ says the Turkish government didn't commit to taking steps to address concerns raised by the delegation, while the Ministry of Justice agreed to continue reform of anti-press laws. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so earlier in the year, so earlier this year, like I was mentioning, uh, the president came under a storm of criticism. So he was kind of attacked. You know, when you think of came under a storm of something, it means a lot of it came at once. So you think of a storm, you know, you have a lot of wind or a lot of rain or something like that. So a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, people from around the world and also in Turkey were criticizing the president because they were attempting, the government was attempting or was trying to block access to. So when you block access to something, nowadays we have the internet, so that means you can't get to Twitter or to YouTube. So people in Turkey cannot access or you know get YouTube or Twitter on their computers. Of course people found different ways to be able to get around this, <laughs> but in terms of officially, if you're in, sitting in Turkey, you couldn't just go online and access Twitter or you know go to Twitter. All right. So after um, and the reason why he did this, so it says after. So that's saying like the re after he did this after users of those websites, so Twitter and YouTube, they were spreading allegations of corruption. So of course, spreading we understand now when things go viral on the internet. They spread really quickly, so people, one person posts it, then another person posts it, and, and then pretty soon, you know, millions of people have seen a video on YouTube or have tweeted different messages. So what they were doing, they were spreading messages or allegations. So when you, you make an allegation against somebody for something, so um, they were basically saying that the the, the president was corrupt or the government had corruption and so this was ahead of or before the elections so the government didn't like that you know especially at that certain time period right before the elections because maybe that could change the outcome of the elections so they shut it down okay the CPJ that's that uh, committee to protect the journalists they said, however, that the government did commit to taking steps. So to, to make a commitment or to commit to doing something means you really are going to do it honestly and truly. You're going to 
to do something and to take steps means you do the things necessary so you know when you have a, a complicated process you have steps you know first step second step third step and so you're taking steps it just means you're doing certain things to do something so in this case to address concerns so to take care of the concerns that were raised by the delegation so uh, you know, certain uh, people had criticisms and they were uh, raised here by this delegation and the Turkish government did try to do something different. So they are trying to reform or continue to reform their anti-press laws. So right now, apparently, they do have some anti or against, you know, against the press type of laws that they're trying to Reform. Reform means to fix, to hopefully make it better, that kind of thing, to make changes. Um, although we disagree with government leaders on the role of news media, we are encouraged by their willingness to meet with us, said CPJ Board Chairman Sandra Mims Rowe, who led the joint delegation. We welcome the commitments they made, and we believe officials recognize the depth of international concerns. Okay. Um, all right. We have... Aldona. Hi, Aldona. You just joined us. You want to read that part there? Yes, I may do it. Sure. Although, okay. Although we disagree with government leaders on the role of news media, we are encouraged by their willingness to meet with us, said CPJ Board Chairman Sandra Mims Rowe, who led the joint delegation. We welcome the commitments they made and we believe Leave officials recognize the depth of international concerns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> although, so e you can say although or even though, um, but, but it just means that you know uh, when you're comparing two different things. So even though we disagree, so we don't agree with the government leaders, like the president of Turkey, <laughs> in terms of what uh, they think the role of news media should be. We they don't agree. Uh, the Turkish government thinks they should do one thing. And the journalists think they should do, be doing something different. So they're not in agreement about that. But we are encouraged by, so we feel good about, like we, we are hopeful by, you know, because based on their willingness to meet with us. So willingness <clears throat> means they have um, the desire to do something. So if you have a willingness to study English, for example, you come to verbaling classes. That's one way that you can show your willingness to, to study English. So they showed their willingness um, to meet with them by showing up at this conference to talk about media and the role of media and how it affects governments and what governments might do uh, related to that. So um, this is the person who led, you know, who was the leader of the joint delegation. So a joint delegation is joint meaning like two groups coming together and usually you have a the delegation is like those people who were delegated to be a part of a, a group of people who go somewhere and do something so you know if you're if you have two different uh, let's just say you have two different uh, organizations and they want to have a group of people from each of the organizations go to a conference or something they create a joint Delegation. So people from each group joins together, and they create the group of the new group of people that will actually go to the conference to represent both of the group's opinions. That kind of thing. So joint delegation. You hear this a lot when you're reading uh, things about uh, politics and different organizations and governments and things like that. All right. So we welcome again in quotes. We welcome the commitments they made. So the things that they said they would do. A commitment is something you say you're going to do and we believe that the officials uh, recognize so that they understand the depth of international concern so the depth of something just means how important something is how serious it really is so basically saying that they think the Turkish leaders really do understand how important this is to the international community of people of journalists, of uh, you know, internet users, that type of thing. So they're very people are very concerned about what governments might do to the internet, to the media, that type of thing. Okay, the delegation included former editors, correspondents, and representatives from Reuters, New York Newsday, Al Jazeera, 
and the Washington Post, among other organizations. Okay, you can just finish up that little paragraph there, Abimelech. Okay. Mm. The delegation included former editors, correspondents, and representatives from Reuters, New York News Day, Al Jazeera, and the Washington Post, among other organizations. Mm -hmm. So again, the delegation, which just means the group of people that uh, went to this conference, they included former editors. So former means they don't uh, necessarily work now as editors for these people, but they used to in the past. So they're former um, editors, correspondents. Those are the people who go to different countries and then they report from those countries, or they send in their you know news reports and write. Uh, on the websites, things like that. They're corresponding from other places around the world, so they get international news that way. And representatives, so well, I don't know what type of representatives. Could be more on the business side of things, the marketing side, uh, human resources, something like that, but they represent these various organizations. So these are pretty popular. Uh, Reuters sends out news that uh, different websites and, and uh, newspapers and TV shows pick up and report on. Al Jazeera is, has an English site, but I think it's, it's from, I'm not sure exactly where it's from, Egypt or some, it has like a Middle Eastern uh, perspective. And then the Washington Post, among others. So whenever you say among other, it just means I'm giving you some, but there are other organizations as well. So these are just among or part of a bunch of other organizations that were also included in this conference here. Okay, so before we discuss, because we have 20 minutes now and I want to hear what you guys think about this, but before we do that, does anybody have any questions about the language? Any of the vocabulary words or some uh, phrases that were used that you don't understand that you want me to explain? Nope. Okay. Um, I don't know if we just lost Olga and Aldona because they had to go or if you're having trouble with your internet connection, but if you're having trouble with your internet uh, connection, just refresh your page and hopefully you'll come back in to participate because we're going to talk about this now. Um, so what do you guys think about this? This basic idea that uh, some governments, you know, the, especially this particular one, Turkey right now, is saying that they're against the internet. Uh, Greg, what's your impression about this idea that governments being against the internet? Well, I don't see anything special in that because usually politicians cannot uh, think that they will be reading about themselves positive things. I rather <laughs> think that yeah. they will be most of the time they will be uh, reading negative comments about their own decisions. Yeah. Um, but if they try to mix uh, things like um, threat of terrorism on the territory of own country with uh, freedom of speech, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, I, it's like, who they try to, you know, mm, I mean, they start to, you know, lying to the people because if they try to connect both things and they try to think uh, that someone has a different opinion about something and uh, they try to compare these two things to some kind of terrorism behind of this whole criticism. It's mm. kind of scary. It's kind of, I don't know. I'm, I remember that when we have this kind of thing, I think it was ACTA or ACTA. Mm -hmm. I remember that in the United States, in the other country, people stay at home. Um, in Poland, that was the I, that was the only I think thing that uh, helped to gather the people on the streets. So I think it's quite important when not only politicians make this decision, but also not only the organization are involved in this conference. But I think um, if, if in Turkey they want to have uh, freedom of speech on the internet, they want to have freedom of press, they we start, you know, find a solution. I'll try to protest because I don't see, I don't know the, the way, I don't know the situation in Turkey because I don't read too much about Turkey. Mm -hmm. But I remember that this government, I think there's 
said something pretty strange uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is not the first time uh, mm. when the circuit controversy. I remember that uh, they they talking something about the law that the women should not laugh loudly. <laughs> I <don't know>. I, okay, <laughs> I didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, I'm, but it's maybe. It is something typical for the people who are, I don't know I don't know his age because my all my teacher of my language in the in the high school has similar view that usually people should not laugh loudly but and it wasn't a law and here <laughs> someone just has this radical opinions in this kind in our country it's kind of scary thing I don't know I wonder what I know I think they in this kind this kind of uh, president. It's kind of a radical person you know, he's has a radical point of view on many things, too much radical. It's kind of scary if they mm -hmm. just lost their freedom of speech or press. So mm -hmm. I think it's not really the issue with the politicians, it's everything. Uh, the task is for, there's this important task for the society because mm -hmm. they have to fight about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's an interesting thing. Yeah, when they're when they're coming out to say it. Of course, I, I like your point. Like, of course, uh, a politician probably can't expect to only see good things about him on the either on the internet or even in the newspaper. Part of you know having the freedom of press means that you can criticize and have a different point of view. So, um, and of course. If somebody's criticizing you, you probably don't like that. But should you be able to shut them down, you know, so that they can't do that anymore or something? Yeah, Anatoly, what do you, what do you think about that? Uh, this idea that you know a president of a country is saying that I'm against the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, my first impression as mm -hmm. a uh, um, average person. Mm -hmm. I'm against that statement because uh, uh, as a customer of internet I prefer to be in free space in internet mm -hmm. but uh, it is only <laughs> the first uh, impression yeah. of uh, that uh, when I'm uh, looking to the uh, some um, features of internet which could uh, help not only uh, provide uh, uh, freedom around the world but it also helps uh, uh, provide uh, terrorist, uh, ter ter terrorism mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it could be also uh, used uh, by uh, uh, secret service uh, uh, or uh, something like this uh, like, like this uh, for manipulating of uh, social opinion Mm. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think it is possible to uh, make some restriction. It is uh, like, uh, uh, in my opinion, could be like uh, um, self-defense of uh, national interests in uh -huh. country. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it is uh, <laughs> more deeply uh, look to uh, that problem and uh, also I, I remember I participated in the class once. Uh, mm. We read an uh, uh, article about uh, this uh, uh, President er Erdogan. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, created, uh, he was pro uh, providing idea at about tone tunnel, uh, tunnel uh, between oh, yeah. uh, Europe and a Asia. Yeah. Yes, it, it was uh, his passion. And uh, I, uh, after uh, this, uh, that class, I read uh, some uh, additional information about that person, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, started to respect him. Hmm. Uh, I know that uh, it is not uh, maybe mm, uh, we don't have uh, one opinion about uh, this uh, person. It is a little contra controversial topic. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, we need uh, to hear what he uh, wanted to say. Uh, uh, as I uh, mentioned in the first part of my speech, I, uh, uh, in general, <laughs> I am for, for freedom. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, we have also some <coughs> other. I, uh, I have also uh, some other ideas. Sure. Yeah, I want to hear about those different ideas too, because certainly every every state like this is just a statement. I am increasingly against the internet every day, but yeah, the article that we read doesn't really tell us why. <laughs> They're just focusing on this this statement. Perhaps he has some good reasons. You know, it could be that you know certainly um, a population could be persuaded uh, to believe certain things, even if they're inaccurate or they're flat out you know lies or something, because a lot of people trust the internet or they trust websites. And and nowadays it, it's hard sometimes. You know, somebody somebody will tell you something, and um, you say, oh yeah, where did you hear that? And you say. You know, the person says, "Oh, I, I read it on the internet." You know, that doesn't mean it's true. You know, <laughs> just because somebody put up a website and they wrote something, it's it's hard to know nowadays. Even though we have so much information, what is actually true or valuable information? So, I you know, I would like to hear what he's saying, of course, but of course, I want freedom as well. So, uh, what do you think, uh, Abimelech? What does that this article bring up for you? In terms of the internet and the governments, I guess. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, first thing, uh, my English is not so good, so I, I won't be able to uh, speak much. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, I, I understood, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I also uh, against uh, against of uh, uh, band of, on internet because uh, internet is uh, very much useful. Mm-hmm. For us, and uh, here is uh, president saying that uh, he's ag- against uh, the internet, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that is for uh, his purpose only. I think mm-hmm. because uh, he uh, no uh, no big reason uh, is uh, we showing against the internet. Yeah. So you think it's only for his own reasons that he is against the internet? Like he wants to only hear good things about himself, maybe, or his government? Mm. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What What about um in India right now? Does the government of India ban any certain websites or things like that? Or is it free? Uh, like the internet is. Uh, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's free in India. Mm-hmm. So in India, in you can go to uh, any website. Uh, yes. Okay. You can go any any website. Mhm. Mhm. Anatoly, is is it pretty free in uh, Russia these days? Or are there certain sites that uh, are not available in Russia, or pretty much anything is available? I think it is uh, almost free. Uh, sometimes when I uh, click on the link, uh, I receive information about uh, this uh, site is blocked for uh, breaking rules, uh, oh, for okay. por- por- pornography uh, context, uh, context uh, or etc. Ah, like yeah. sure. Or, okay. or vi- violent uh, con- contest. Content. But it is. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, uh, Seldom enough, it is not common. I I think I mm-hmm. I think it is uh, little restriction. Yeah, and um, what do you think about the idea that his that he did accuse uh, or criticize, we could say, uh, certain uh, media outlets for polarizing and distorting coverage of events. Um, as a person who reads the news, Anatoly, do you tend to believe what you're reading or do you like to look at different sources or how do you figure out what's true and what's not true? Because you know he's accusing the, the media outlets, these newspapers and you know TV shows maybe, that the way that they report about certain events might be um, not accurate, so might distort the, what actually happened, or might actually serve to, you know, we say pit two groups up against each other, so to polarize them. Do you think that 
is that would he was that an accurate criticism? Do you think the media outlets do do that sometimes? Uh, I, I like uh, I use it that way uh, campaign different uh, resources with uh, different orientation mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I like uh, possibility uh, to campaign it it, it, it is uh, one of the main reason uh, why I am studying English because I am able to read uh, international uh, sources mm, to get different points of view. Uh, yes, I, I appreciate uh, that possibility, and <laughs> I, I I like idea to stay uh, um, free from in uh, for internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Greg, uh, do you would you agree with um, the president of Turkey or the Turkish leaders when they accuse media outlets of uh, distorting the facts, maybe, and changing the story a little bit? Do you think that happens, or do you think most news outlets are trying to be accurate and just reporting the facts? Um, actually, um, maybe there's, I don't know the situation about the Turkey, maybe that is the situation that media change some facts, maybe because they try to, you know, support the party that think they should, uh, uh, you know, yeah. be rule in this country. It's happening in my in my country that uh, if you look at the media, they have different opinions. If you feel closer, you will see the media are just closer to the party that have the same share the same value and have the similar opinions about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes there is not too much is, uh, difference between the one newspaper who uh, look at the one case and at the same time you look at the politician who just share the same opinion to the journalist. Yeah. So it can be a situation that media not really lie, but uh, they follow some political options. So mm. maybe that is the problem because um, one thing is that media try to create own opinions. Second, secondly, is the situation that m media sometimes using the... There's another aspect that uh, they follow the, some political party, but uh, there is something situation that's quite uh, strange because if they're making some specific changes about the facts, uh, they try to gain popularity um, on giving the information which is not really accurate to the yeah. uh, situation. Yeah, what happens here sometimes is... Uh, you have different news outlets, and um, then you have people criticizing them because either they're they're always for the Republicans or they're always for the Democrats or something like that. But it is true that even a news outlet could have a, a point of view, and so maybe when they tell the stories that happen, they're but, telling them from a certain point of view. Yeah. But I think that in the countries like I don't know in UK, United. Yeah. When you have two parties and uh, you have all these medias who represent all these uh, powers in the parliament or in the uh, uh, position as the president, yeah. it's a better situation than like in Poland you have, I don't know, I think it is seven parties right now in mm. different public institutions or seven or eight, I don't know. I think there will be eight in the next week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and you have, uh, I don't know, was about the 60, uh, close to 40 million people who just say we don't see anybody in mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, <laughs> in the media or in the parliament yeah. who actually represent uh, um, what will be interesting, important for us. So it's kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a, good, a good thing because uh, because the the only thing that is quite uh, what notice that. Uh, you know that we are not such Pol Polish people and Americans are not the state of people to like to vote. Mm. So the, yeah. If, if the, we start voting, there's always uh, I don't know, uh, sometimes ten percent in some parts, forty mm. percent, thirty, and stuff like that. It's, it's still nice if you uh, have mm, some major uh, political parties instead uh, in. The, Many parties who actually nobody agree with with yeah. anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, that's true. Um, 
So, Abimelech, in India, uh, do you usually trust the news media when you hear, when you read the news about what's happening in the government, or do you usually trust them, or do you usually have um, uh, doubts, maybe? Uh, actually, sometimes uh, I doubt because uh, media also uh, uh, tells the story uh, by modifying the truth, and uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's true. I think. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we we don't have other sources uh, to know the truth. Only we have media. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes. Does the uh, government in we, India we, control the media, or is it free? Uh, government controls the media. Okay. Yeah. So when you want to find out some news, do you read a newspaper, watch TV, or go on the internet? Uh, it's uh, uh it's um, I prefer internet. Mm -hmm. Do you read international news or mostly news from India? Uh, mostly news from India and sometimes uh, international also. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Anatoly, I know that you uh, read a lot of different things on the internet. We talked about that the other day. Do you ever watch the news on TV in Russia? Is that something that you think would be valuable or not so valuable? Hmm. I, uh, I watch TV uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes uh, only news uh, during uh, in the morning during the uh, breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I I think uh, uh, the best way <laughs> uh, to avoid uh, uh, watching uh, constantly TV mm -hmm. and uh, um, it 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 could help uh, uh, good mood. Uh, in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. uh, uh, if we uh, compare uh, number of uh, bad and good news, yeah. uh, we can notice that uh, bad news usually uh, much much more. Maybe mm -hmm. all audience uh, prefer uh, to watch bad news. I uh, don't mean uh, uh, entertainment uh, uh, shows. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, I I don't like it. Uh, very seldom I mm -hmm. I uh, like it. Yeah, Greg. What about you? Do you ever watch uh, the news on TV in England, or do you just go on the internet to read about news? Well, I well I don't like to watch uh, what is on TV said because usually I know what they will say. It's not that um, I. I I cannot say that trust them because I don't trust them. I yeah. think that some things are usually uh, show it in this way that actually I cannot uh, do agree with this. So even if I watch it sometimes, but usually it's try to avoid. Um, I I say that it's not really something what you watch. It's something uh, how, how is your opinions about uh, many general things, and um, because. Um, uh, I, there are actually two categories of people: people who have some kind of point of view. Mm -hmm. um, no, they have a strong knowledge or maybe weak knowledge about politician, political events. And uh, every time, when, uh, for example, you have point of view, you know what you should think about it from your own <laughs> perspective. Yeah. And uh, the second category of people that actually I do care, I don't like, yeah. uh, is that. They have point of view, a couple of things, and they always need some kind of hint in the form of kind of well-known newspapers because mm. that is, you know, that they will, that is the source that everything will be correct for them. But actually, I'm not this kind of person. I'm using internet. Sometimes I agree or disagree with opinions presented by representative of specific politicians, politicians parties, but it's just. I have, you know, it's a thinking category. If they do it, if they plan to do it, I do not agree. Okay, it's happened. I just vote for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Because the rest, it doesn't really doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, represent exactly what I want to see in my country. But 
I don't know. It's just the, the point of view. It's not actually what you. It's just point of view. You, yeah. you have. You, sh you should have own. Um, your, your own point of view. Yeah, you should have your own set of rules that always apply to most situation. It's not really about who you're voting, but what kind of values people try to, uh, you know, realize in their own country. Yeah. Okay, well, um, we just finished up the hour, so I want to let you guys go if you want to go on to another class. But thank you guys for coming. It's an interesting topic. The internet, it's new still, kind of, and governments are trying to figure out what to do with it, even if they don't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll see how it turns out as we continue on. So thanks for coming to class, and I'll see you guys later. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.